Hi, I'm Isaac Shellian, product manager for Leviton. Today I'm going to tell you about our brand new wireless lighting control system, Green Connect. The Green Connect product line has wall box devices, dimmers and switches, a controlled receptacle, three different junction box load controllers, a ceiling mount battery powered PIR occupancy sensor with integrated photo cell, and a battery powered companion dimmer and also switch. One of the great features about Green Connect is push to pair programming. You don't need a gateway, you don't need a room controller, you don't need an app to program. First step in putting together a Green Connect system is deciding which device you want to use as your network manager, either the wall station or one of our junction box load controllers. The receptacle you can't create a network with it, it doesn't have that capability. Likewise, our ceiling mount combination sensor that's both PIR and a daylight photo cell and our battery powered dimmer. Neither of these devices are capable of creating a network. I'm gonna go ahead and press and hold the top paddle and observe that first it blinks at me red three times. And then after the first amber blink, I'm gonna let go. So now my dimmer is in my main menu. While the LED is blinking amber, and in the main menu, I have a number of options. I can create a network, I can join an existing network, and I can also access the system features of Green Connect. But to start, I wanna designate this device as the network manager by tapping twice on the top paddle. The LED is going to stop blinking amber. The device will reset and come back online now knowing that it is the network manager. And when it does that, it's also going to toggle its load off, on, off, on as soon as the network has been created. And this is a visual indication that the network has been created and is now open for devices to join. Another indicator is that the LED has now begun to blink green slowly. So right now, just observing my device, I can tell that the network is open and ready for another device to join. So now what I'm gonna do is pair my controlled receptacle to my dimmer, which is functioning as the network manager. To do that, I press the programming button or test button on the front of the device. And likewise, I'll press and hold. And at the first interval, I'll see what the device's status is, which is it's not part of a network. And then after the first amber blink, I release. Now I'm in my main menu. This device isn't capable of creating a network. So if I tap twice, nothing's gonna happen. To join an existing network that's open, I tap once. The LED will start blinking green slowly while it searches for a network to join. Once the device finds a network, it's gonna toggle its relay and the network manager will also toggle its load off, on, off, on. So you can see that the LED on the receptacle is now blinking green slowly in unison with my network manager. So now I want to tell you all about our ceiling mount occupancy sensor with an integrated photo cell. So this is a passive infrared occupancy sensor and it's battery powered. The way I can access the battery is by aligning the two arrows and then this base plate comes off. You can see that it's ran on a single AA battery, easy to replace. To put the cover back on, I just align the arrows and then turn and so. Now the sensor, every time it sees motion or it detects motion, it's going to blink the LED underneath the cover red. So that's an indication of motion. This is how you pair our ceiling mount occupancy sensor to a green connect network. You need to remove the cover. And underneath the cover, you can see that there's a green test button right there. Now, if I want to join the network, Press and hold. First I'll see device status. And after the first amber blink, I release. So now I'm in my main menu. 
To start looking for a network to join, I tap once and the LED is going to start blinking green. Once the sensor joins the network, all of the connected loads in the network will toggle their relays off, on, off, on, which is a visual indication that a new device has joined the network. So my sensor is battery powered and it doesn't have a load connected, so it can't turn itself off, on, off, on. But as soon as the sensor joins the network, the LED stops blinking green and all of the connected devices that do have loads will toggle off, on, off, on to show me that a new device has joined the network. So I'm really excited about our brand new battery powered companion dimmer. This device is great because since it's powered by batteries, right, I can mount it almost anywhere. It comes with double-sided tape that I can use to stick it to the wall. It also comes with normal device screws if I want to put it into a wall box. If I take the wall plate off, the companion dimmer is powered by two CR2025 three volt coin cell batteries. Now let me show you how to join my companion dimmer to a green connect network. You start by pressing and holding the top paddle until you see the LED blink amber once and then release. It blinks amber rapidly while I'm in the main menu. I'll tap once to start looking for a network to join. Okay. If I want to manually close the network, I just come to my network manager and I tap the top paddle and all connected devices will toggle their loads off, on, off, on. And now my network is closed. If I wanna turn my load off, I simply tap on the bottom or tap on the top. This is the dimming rocker along the side that I can use to dim the load down. There's a level indicator that as you dim up or down, you can see visually what level you're at. You can also press and hold to slowly dim up or down. So right now the network is closed and if I want to reopen the network to join a new device, I press the top panel until I see one amber blink and now I'm back in my main menu. I don't know if you noticed, but it didn't blink device status this time. The device, once it's been configured as a network manager, will no longer blink its device status. The installing contractor gets to decide if they want to use the wall box device as the network manager or the junction box load controller. To create a network is the same process. I come to my test button, I press and hold, First, I'm going to see device status. And after one amber blink, I'm going to release. And now I'm in my main menu. If I tap once, the device is going to look for a network to join. And that's not what I want to do. I want to tap twice to tell the junction box load controller that it's going to be my network manager. It has to reset itself. And when it comes back online, it's now been configured to function as a network manager. And it will open the Green Connect network. It, the device will toggle its relay off, on, off, on when the network has been created and is open for other devices to join. I do that by coming to my network manager, pressing and holding until I see the first amber blink and then I release. You'll notice that this time there was no blink back to show me device status. Once a device has been set up as the network manager, it no longer blinks its status. And we did that on purpose so that we can know which device is functioning as the network manager. So that's one indication. If you press and hold and it doesn't blink device status, it's already been set up as a network manager. So now if I wanted to pair my dimmer, all I do is come and press the top paddle. First I'll see the LED blink 
red to tell me it's not part of a network. Now it's blinking amber rapidly. I know I'm in my main menu. To join a network, I tap once. And in this example, I'm gonna go ahead and show you that while this dimmer begins searching for a network, I can go ahead and move on to any other devices that are gonna be part of the Green Connect network. I don't have to wait for this one. I can keep going on to the next one. And I do that by pressing and holding first to see device status, then after one amber blink, I release, blinking amber rapidly to show me that I'm in my main menu. And I'll tap once to tell the device to start looking for a Green Connect network to join. As soon as the receptacle finds the network, it toggles its relay off, on, off, on. And all connected devices will also toggle their loads off, on, off, on. And the LED on the receptacle, dimmer, and junction box load controller are all now blinking green slowly to show me that they're all part of the network and that the network is still open. Now in this example, I used my junction box load controller to create the network. So once I'm done adding devices, I would return to my load controller and tap the test button once to close the network. And again, I get my visual indication that the network is now closed. If I wanna change any of the features of the system, I do that by coming to my network manager, pressing and holding until I see the first amber blink, and then I release. You'll notice that this time, there was no blink back to show me device status. Once a device has been set up as the network manager, it no longer blinks its status. And we did that on purpose so that we can know which device is functioning as the network manager. So that's one indication. If you press and hold and it doesn't blink device status, it's already been set up as a network manager. So I'm in my main menu. If I tap once, I'm gonna open the network because this is my network manager. If I tap twice, that will reset this device, reset my network manager, break the network, and all devices that were connected will now no longer be joined together in a network. If I tap three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine times, that's how I access my system features. So when you look at the installation instructions, there's system features, auto on level, partial off, sensitivity, daylighting, partial off level, primary timeout, secondary timeouts, all features of the system that are accessed by coming to your network manager, pressing and holding until you're into your main menu, and then tapping the number of times that corresponds to the menu or the feature that you want to access. Now you'll notice that the device stopped blinking amber. So when I'm in my main menu, my device will stay there for 60 seconds, but if I don't do anything within those 60 seconds, my load controller will automatically exit. So I'm in my main menu. If I tap three times, I'm now in feature number three. The LED will blink back green the number of times that corresponds to the feature menu that you're in. Next, it'll blink amber the number of times it corresponds to the setting of that menu currently saved. And then that pattern repeats. So if we we'll watch, first I should see three green blinks to tell me that I'm in feature menu three. And then there were five amber blinks after that to tell me that setting number five in feature menu three is what's currently saved in my network manager. And then again, that process will repeat until I exit out of this menu. To change the feature setting, I just tap the test button the number of times it corresponds to the new setting that I want. So for this example, I'm gonna tap twice. After tapping twice, the LED will blink amber twice to show that the new setting has been saved. 
and then that blink back pattern repeats. To exit the feature menu, I recommend waiting until the blink back pattern finishes, just not to interrupt it. And I press and hold until I see one amber blink. Then I release. So now my device is blinking amber rapidly again to show me that I'm in my main menu. And that's how you can go in and out of menus. If I want to access feature number four, now that I'm in my main menu, I could tap one, two, three, four times. And what I'll see first is four green blinks to show me that I'm in feature menu four. Then I count however many amber blinks I see to know what setting is currently saved in feature menu four. Three amber blinks, which means setting number three, which is the default setting, is what's currently saved in my network manager for feature number four. If I wanna change that to, let's say, setting number one, I'll tap once. It'll blink amber once to show me what the new setting is. And then my blink back pattern will repeat again. And I like to observe to make sure that the setting that I chose is the setting that's there. To exit the menu, press and hold until I see amber once and then release. Now I'm back in my main menu. This is how I would change features of the system, like my occupancy timeout, whether or not I want partial on, vacancy, partial off. If I enable partial off, what my partial off timeout is gonna be and my partial off level. This is also how I change sensitivity on the sensor or enable daylighting. To exit the main menu, I press and hold the test button until I see one amber blink and then release. The LED will stop blinking amber because now I've exited entirely. And I also want to show you something really cool about my network manager. One of the cool features about Green Connect is my network manager every 60 seconds will pause the slow green blink and blink red once for each device that's in the network. So this is how I can know how many devices have joined. Right now I'm expecting to see four red blinks because I've joined four devices to my network. To remove a device from a Green Connect network, press and hold that you see the LED blink amber for the second time and then release. This is also how you reset a device. When designing a Green Connect system, one important consideration is range. How far apart the devices are from each other. Green Connect is able to communicate with devices that are within 75 feet line of sight of the network manager. Another important consideration for Green Connect networks is only program one room at a time. If you have more than one network open and you put a device into pairing mode, the device will join whichever network is closer. It's really important to prevent the device from joining the incorrect network that you only program one room at a time, or you only have one network open at a time. 